I am Ms. Ara Vinis Ocampo, a Hospitality Management Instructor. Welcome to my class! A pleasant day to each and every one of you. Welcome to our class, Legal Aspects in Tourism and Hospitality. So I'd like to welcome all the Hospitality and Tourism Management students. So for today's discussion, we are going to talk about catering law. So this is something to do with the so-called food catering. And we all know that this holiday season, marami sa atin ang talagang naggala. Marami sa atin ang talagang um, naglibot ano, sa iba't ibang mga tourist destination. And of course, hindi mawawala doon is yung pag-try natin ng iba't ibang mga klase ng Pagkain. So, this holiday season, we've also experienced attending different kinds of events such as birthdays, reunions, what else? Um, even yung simple gatherings sa family natin, ba? So, maraming mga families or even mga companies establishment ang talagang nag-avail ng mga so-called catering services just to make sure, no? Just to make sure na yung event nila is magiging organized and less hassle than sa part nung pinaka management. So, in this lesson, we are going to talk about the different rules, regulations pertaining to food services, specifically catering services. So, when we've talked about catering kasi, um, ito yung sinasabi natin ng mga provision. Okay? So, it is a kind of business of providing food service at a remote site or site such as hotel, even hospital, sa loob ng mga aircraft cruise ship, mga parks, mga entertainment site, or even event venues. So, si catering, hindi lang po siya limited sa tinatawag natin na mga event venue or mga sites. So, even sa hospital, even sa mga cruise ship, sa mga aircrafts, airplanes, okay? So, mga entertainment site, nag exist si catering law. So, even if you are a hospitality or tourism management student, it is essential for you to know ano nga ba yung sinasabi natin na catering law. So, let's begin with first, ayan, serving food. So, sabi dyan, people all over the world love to dine out. So, we can deny the fact na tayo mga Pilipino is mahilig talagang mag-try ng iba't ibang mga pagkain sa iba't ibang mga restaurants. Nowadays, yung mga simpleng um, street vendors, street food vendors, talaga namang tinatry natin yung iba't ibang klaseng pagkain. So, in fact, 1996 was the first year that takeout occasions exited on premise occasions in the U.S. food service industry. So, even before, no, kakapanganak pa lang ng ilan sa atin, 1996, nag exist na yung tinatawag natin ng mga takeout occasions o yung mga, ang tawag natin ngayon doon is mga takeaway o yung tinatawag nga natin na takeout. So, ibig sabihin, we have to go to a particular um, restaurant or establishment, we have to order the food, and then later on is take out natin siya or iuwi. So, as you can see also in your module, sinasabi dun that some experts predict that fully 75% of food eaten in the United States will be pre-prepared by restaurants or grocery stores. So, usong-uso na ngayon, ano, yung mga ready-to-eat foods, yung mga naka-prepared na, and all you need to do is to, like, microwave it, o kaya naman ipainit, and then, good to go na siya, or pwede na agad siyang kainin. So, serving food is one of the crucial part of hospitality and tourism industry, because we are not just serving food to our guests or to our clients or customers, rather, we are serving quality and safe food to them. Okay, so we have here a sample case. So, let me read the case problem. So, sabi dito, consider the case of Kelly Klitsch. Kelly worked long hours to establish her own successful restaurant. So, with much hard work and a considerable investment of capital, Kelly built the reputation of her restaurant by serving high-quality food at fair prices. So, in the first scenario, so we have here Kelly. So, Kelly... So, nagtrabaho siya, okay? Nagtrabaho siya talaga, very hardworking woman. And later on, dahil sa hard work niya, is nakapag-gather siya ng enough capital to build her own restaurant. Eventually, that restaurant gained a good reputation in the market. And dahil um, nag-click yung kanyang restaurant, 
um, nag-serve sila. Okay? Nagsaserve sila ng mga high quality food at fair prices. So, ibig sabihin, nag-gain nila yung magandang reputation, yung image ng restaurant because they make sure to serve okay, high quality food sa kanilang mga guests. So, when a careless member of the food preparation team forgot to refrigerate a chicken stock one night, then used the stock the next day to flavor an uncooked sauce, which was later served, several individuals became very ill. So, there's this one scenario na nangyari sa restaurant. Okay? So, sabi dyan, a careless member of the food preparation. So, let's just say isa sa mga cook ni Kelly ang nagkamali. Okay, nagkamali dahil ginamit yung chicken stock, okay, yung pinakuluan na broth or pinakuluan na mga bones ng chicken. Ginamit niya yun the following day, which was yung ginamit niya is hindi na i-refrigerate. So, may tendency na napanis na po yung chicken stock. So, without even knowing kung yun ay spoiled na, so, ginamit niya po yun sa pag-create ng sauce. Okay, so, later on, Dahil hindi nga alam na yun ay na-spoil na or sira na, sinerve niya po yun sa mga guests. Okay? And later on, yung mga individuals, yung mga guests na nakakain ng particular sauce na yun or meal is nagkasakit po. So, the good reputation of Kelly's restaurant disappeared overnight as the local newspapers and television stations reported how one elderly lady was hospitalized after eating at the restaurant. So, ibig sabihin, nagkaroon ng tinatawag na parang food poisoning, food contamination. So, whatever it is na naging problem, nang dahil lang doon sa uncooked sauce. So, can you imagine the Ang tagal niyang binild yung restaurant na yon, ang tagal bago nagkaroon ng magandang reputation, and in just a blink of an eye, nasira. Okay, nag-disappeared yung magandang reputation na yon, kasi na-report sa dyaryo, na-report sa television din. And even, may mga victims, okay, na-hospital pa yung biktima. So, counter counts plummeted and Kelly lost her business and that was before the lawsuit was filed on behalf of the elderly diner. So syempre, hindi naman kasi lahat ng tao is mapapakiusapan natin to settle things. 'Di ba? Yung bigyan na lang ng pera, i-shoulder na lang yung hospitalization. So may mga tao, may mga customers tayo na they are willing to take the action, ayan, legal action, magfa-file sila ng lawsuit just to make sure na mabigyan ng justice yung nangyari sa kanila. So, unfortunately, because of that incident, nagsara. Okay, nagsara or nawala kay Kelly yung business niya. So, in this case, binibigyan natin ng importance yung quality ng pagkain na sinaserve sa mga restaurants. I'm sure that a lot of you are dining in sa mga fast food, sa mga formal restaurants, or even sa mga maliliit na mga um, food businesses such as mga milk tea shop, mga bilihan ng mga snacks. So, isa tayo no, sa mga future frontliners na magsaserve ng high quality food sa ating mga guests. So, it is very important and as you have seen, but how the restaurant serves its food can be just as important from a legal standpoint. Kasi pagkain po yung sinaserve natin. Kahit naman sa bahay, we want to make sure that we prepare, we cook our meals safely, sanitized, di ba, malinis nating niluluto, kasi kinakain din po natin yun. So, it should be the same thing na maging mindset natin kapag nagtrabaho tayo sa food industry. Some of you are working in McDonald's, some of you are working in Jollibee, sa mga fast food chain. So, alam nyo dapat, okay, alam nyo dapat on how are you going to serve quality food, okay, and beverages to your guests. So, not only restaurants can be found guilty of serving unwholesome food, but they can also be found liable if they serve wholesome food in an unsafe or negligent manner. So, sometimes, um, tayo kasi pineprepare naman na natin yung mga pagkain. Alam nyo yun, nakamis and plus na yan. And sometimes, pag napatunayan na yung prepare mong pagkain is unsafe, yung mga ginamit mong ingredients is mga hindi na siya good to serve, 
alam yun, yung mga expired na o yung malapit ng ma-expired and then later on, nagkaroon ng negative effect sa inyong mga guests, sa inyong mga customers. So, you will be held liable as well. So, dyan po nagkakaroon yung mga sinasabi natin na mga foodborne illness, okay, mga food poisoning, food contamination, na later on, it can became or it can become a catastrophic. Alam yun, yung pwedeng dumami. Kung maraming mga guests ang naka-avail, nakakain ng particular food na yun. So, yun, para siyang virus, para siyang poison na maraming pwedeng maapektuhan. So, we have here legally managing at work. So, ano daw ba yung mga steps na kailangan nating itake? Ayan, steps to take when a guest complains of foodborne illness. So, let's just say may nangyaring incident okay, about food contamination, foodborne illness. So, ano ba yung gagawin natin kapag may mga guests na nagreklamo or nag-file ng complaints? So, step number one, we have to document the name, address, and telephone number of the guest. So, ganun naman talaga. We have to take it formal, in a formal manner. So, we have to get their names, saan sila nakatira, the telephone number, ano yung um, reklamo nila about that particular um, scenario. So, as well as the date and the time of the guests patronize your facility. So, dapat naka-record. -rec even kung kailan sila nag-dine in, anong oras sila nag-dine in doon sa restaurant. So, you have to document all items eaten in your facility by the guests during the visit in question. So, ibig sabihin kung meron tayong photos, okay, meron tayong katunayan na may mga CCTV footages, okay, so kung ano man yung in-order ni guests, so dapat nakadocument. So, obtain the name and address of the physician treating the guest if the guest has not contacted a physician, encourage him or her to do so. So, kung kinakailangan na talaga ng medical treatment, kailangan na ng doktor or ng physician, so, ilalagay din natin yung pangalan ng physician na yun. So, otherwise, if hindi pa sila nakakatawag ng doktor, so, you have to let them, encourage them na mag-contact. So, contact the physician to determine if in fact a case of foodborne illness has been diagnosed. So, minsan hindi naman tayo magko-conclude na okay, na foodborne illness yan, uy, na food poison yan. So, kailangan pa rin natin ng mga experts, mga medical experts na ma-diagnose yung particular situation. So, notify the local health department immediately if a foodborne illness outbreak is confirmed. So, it's time for you to call, tumawag na, inotify na, i-inform na yung local health department doon sa area. Kung kumalat na yung tinatawag na foodborne illness. So, the staff there can assist you in determining the source of the outbreak. So, syempre, hindi tayo agad-agad magkoconclude. Okay? So, ano ba yung naging sanhe ng outbreak? Ano bang particular na dish yung niluto? Ano ba yung mga items, mga ingredients na ginamit? na nag ng foodborne illness doon sa particular restaurant. So, of course, you have to identify as well yung mga guests, mga employees na involved na naapektuhan doon sa foodborne illness scenario na yun. So, evaluate and if necessary, modify your training and certification efforts that relate to the areas involved in the incident. So, evaluation is also very important and if ma-prove na talagang nagkaroon ng outbreak, nagkaroon talaga ng pagkakamali pagdating sa food preparation, then you must take into consideration to train your personnel. Diba? I-train sila ulit how to prepare food in a safe manner, in a clean manner as well. So, document your efforts and notify your attorney or company risk manager. So, everything should be well documented. And if darating sa point na you will take legal action, so you have to get a responsible attorney para mag-represent nung case mo. So, those are the steps that we can do, we can take, okay, specifically in the case of foodborne illness. So, how about the truth in menu laws? So, very important na kapag tayo ay nagtayo ng restaurant, we must see to it that we are truth kung ano man yung mga ino-offer natin na mga dishes, kay guess. So, hindi tayo basta-basta mag-offer ng mga dishes, mga food, mga meals na alam naman natin hindi nakalagay 
Okay, alam naman natin na wala tayong um, enough ingredients for that. Okay? Kasi minsan, ilalagay nyo doon, um, yung pesto pasta ninyo is may parmesan cheese. Pero in reality, pag nakita mo, Eden cheese lang pala yung ginamit. So, asan yung justice doon na ang mahal-mahal nung dish, pero hindi naman nagre-reflect doon sa ingredients na ginamit. So, truth in menus, the collective name given to various laws and regulations that have been implemented to ensure accuracy in the wording on menus. So, we have to make sure na ano man, ano, yung ilalagay natin na mga words, ano man yung mga description na ilalagay natin sa menu is totoo. Okay, hindi tayo manloloko ng mga guests for the sake na mag-dine in lang sila sa atin. So, your description, your wordings should be true. So, as hospitality manager, you have the right to advertise your food and beverage products in a way that casts them in their best light. So, there is no problem, okay, there is no harm kung gusto natin na i-advertise yung mga products natin yung mga food and beverage product. It's just that, pag nag-advertise tayo, minarket natin yan, we must see to it na realistic yung pag advertise natin. Okay? So, we are promoting na ito, US Prime Steak ito, pero hindi naman pala. We are promoting na we are using wines from Italy, from Spain, pero hindi naman pala doon galing. So, kasi ang advertisement, Yes, we try to attract people, we try to attract yung mga guests, mga customers. And syempre, one way to attract them is to be real, is to be true. Okay? So, you are not free, however, to misrepresent your products. So, ayaw mo naman syempre na manloloko ka ng mga guests. ba? Diba? Ayaw mo naman na iibahin mo yung description just to earn money. So, to do so is a violation that what has come to be commonly known as truth in menu laws. So, we need accuracy in menus. Okay? So, these are designed to protect consumers from fraudulent food and beverage claims. So, we have to make sure na lahat ng gagamitin natin okay, sa ating restaurant, sa pagpiprepare natin ng pagkain, ng mga beverages na yan, we have to see to it na lahat ng yon is um, kinukuha natin sa mga credible suppliers, nakikita natin yung expiration date, yung manufacturing date, so we can use it safely sa paggawa ng pagkain. So, it says that many food service operators believe that truth in menu laws are recent legislation. So, next one is the preparation style. So, tayo sa bahay, we, we have different styles in preparing our food. Okay, so itong mga terms na to, hindi na sa inyo to bago because some of this is talagang ginagawa natin okay, or talagang na-practice na natin gawin sa mga sarili nating bahay. So, why is it important <clears throat> to provide um, proper wording sa menu? Okay, in even the preparation style should be included as well. Kasi pag sinabi mong pork liempo, let's say for example, sa menu, under pork dishes, sabi mo pork liempo, di ba kung ikaw yung guest, magtataka ka, ano bang preparation style yung ginamit sa pork liempo? Is it fried? Is it grilled? Okay, is it baked? Ano ba? So, ibig sabihin, the customer or you, ikaw mismo sa sarili mo, alam mo dapat, Ano yung preparation style na ginamit? Kasi baka mamaya, you are not fond of eating grilled dishes, ba? Mas, ma, mas gusto mo yung fried. So, dapat nakalagay yon sa menu. So, we have here different preparation styles. Like, for example, grilled. So, syempre, pag grilled ang pagkain, makikita mo na may grilled marks. Okay? Hindi yung parang ginuhitan lang, ba? Makikita mo talaga na grill siya. Kasi pwede pong dalawang klase yung pag-grill natin. Pwedeng pan-grilled, pwede namang charcoal grilled. Okay, so may mga pans tayo na pwede mag-grill tayo doon. Pwede naman gumamit tayo ng uling. Okay, so dapat nakalagay din yon sa menu natin. And usually, okay, yung mga ginigrilled natin na mga mga dishes like pork, beef, mga ganyan, chicken, sometimes yung iba doon is ini-steam muna nila bago nila i-grill. So, homemade, alam naman natin, pag homemade, technically speaking, it is not commercially made. So, prepare siya mismo sa 
bahay. So, fresh. Pag sinabing fresh, the product cannot be frozen, canned, dried, or process. Ibig sabihin, fresh na fresh. Okay? Kakapitas lang. Galing lang sa garden. Okay? So, hindi na siya matatawag na fresh kung siya ay frozen, kung galing siya sa mga canned, okay, mga canned goods na yan, mga dried goods, or yung mga processed food. Okay? So, hindi na natin siya matatawag na fresh. We also have the kosher style. So, these are the product flavored or seasoned in a particular manner. This description has no religious significance. So, may mga dishes kasi na ganito talaga yung traditional way ng pagpa-prepare. Ito talaga yung mga ginagamit na seasonings, mga ingredients. So, we call it as kosher style. So, the term kosher naman, products that have been prepared or processed to meet the requirements of the orthodox Jewish religion. So, it has something to do now with the way Jewish people prepare their food. So, those are the different preparation styles. Pero, meron pa yan, madami pa like boiling, broiling, what else, mga pan fried. So, madami pa po. So, next is the ingredients. So, I know some of you sa bahay, maybe kompleto ang ingredients sa mga pagkain. Yung iba naman is nagkikreate na lang ng alternative para lang makapagluto ng iba't ibang dishes. So, sabi dyan, perhaps no area of menu accuracy is more important than the listing of ingredients that actually go into making up a food item. Remember, we cannot really cook a particular dish kung wala tayong mga ingredients na ipeprepare. So, yung ingredients na yan, it should be um, it should came from legit or reliable supplier or kung kanino man kayo bumibili. So, you have to make sure na yung mga ingredients is nasa tamang price, nasa maayos na condition, and syempre, um, kukuha kayo ng mga ingredients, ng mga raw materials na yan, dun sa mga talagang legit na suppliers. So, although restaurants are not currently required to divulge the ingredients list or yung recipe to their guests, there are specific situations when the ingredients listed on a menu must precisely match those used to make the item. So, kasi ang mga restaurants, meron yan mga signature dishes. And we've talked about signature dishes. Ito yung mga hindi nila pwedeng i-reveal. Ibig sabihin, sila lang mismo ang nakapag-create nung dish na yun. So, therefore, hindi nila minsan sinasama yung mga secret ingredients nila doon sa menu. Okay? So, pero syempre, whatever it is na ginamit nila or nilagay nilang wordings doon sa menu, dapat it will be the same item na gagamitin nila pag nagluto ng pagkain. So, for example, an operator or bar operator offers kalua and cream as drinks on a bar menu. So, the drink must be made with both the liquor and the dairy product stated. So, kung nakalagay dun sa drink mo is may kalua, okay, o yung tinatawag nating coffee liquor, tapos may cream. So, dapat nakalagay talaga yun. Okay, hindi tayo maglalagay ng ibang alternative. Now, if gagamit tayo ng mga alternatives, okay, let's say out of stock yung particular ingredient na yun, so dapat i-inform natin si guest. Okay, ma'am, unfortunately, we don't have this kind of brand na ilalagay sa inyong drink. So, is it okay for you that we use this kind of brand? Para aware din si guest. Kasi may mga guests po na alam na talaga yung lasa ng particular brand na to. Nung particular ingredient na to. Kasi madalas silang mag-dine in or maybe mga food experts sila, mga food critic. So, alam na nila yon So, maninibago sila in case na hindi naman talaga yon yung ingredient na nakalagay. Okay? So, whenever a specific ingredient is listed on a menu, the menu item or that item alone should be serve. So, substitution alternatives dapat inform si guess. So, if your state or local government entity has enacted a law or ordinance that, that bans certain ingredients, you should be mindful of compliance unless you wish to pay a fine and copious amounts of legal fees. So, kung halimbawa ay pinagbabawal yung paggamit ng monosodium glutamate o yung MSG o yung tinatawag nating betchin, so dapat kung may ganong um, rule na i-impose sa mga particular country, may mga ordinances, diba? may mga laws about it, so dapat susunod tayo. Okay? Kasi, 
failure to do so, magkakaroon talaga ng mga penalties or yung mga tinatawag nating mga lawsuits. So, ayan, example of menu, nakita natin dito na nakalagay yung pangalan ng dish and then sa baba, nakalagay naman yung kanyang description. Okay, so ibig sabihin, like for example here sa Filipino style food, nakalagay pork sisig. So, sa baba, ang nakalagay na description, pork sisig on a sizzling plate. So, at least you are aware na yung sisig palang isa-serve sa'yo is nasa sizzling plate. O, ang tawag sa kanya is pork sisig in a sizzling plate. Okay, so hindi ka magtataka. Like for example here, um, mangas, manga salad. So, nakalagay dito, ang description niya, Julian green mango with shallots and cilantro, dressed with sweet fish sauce. So, kasi pag sinabi mong mangga salad, parang ang thinking, puro mangga ba yan? Okay, so may kasama siya mga shallot, cilantro, other green leafy vegetables din. At ang kanyang pinaka-dressing is sweet fish sauce. Okay, so makikita ninyo, mas nagkakaroon tayo ng knowledge, mas aware tayo sa kung anong food yung in-order natin. And syempre, nakalagay din naman dyan, or pwede nating tanungin, if that particular dish is good for how many servings po ba? Okay, sometimes kasi, minsan mag-isa ka lang, tapos ang orderin mo is for family or good for ilang person. So, we can ask the waiter or crew. Next is the origin. So, very important for many menu items, the origin of the products or its ingredients is very important. So, saan ba nang galing yung particular product or item na yan or yung ingredients? So, yung mga vegetables ba natin is galing pa talaga sa Baguio? Yung bang mga ingredients natin na yan is in-import pa or in-export pa galing sa ibang bansa? Okay? So, because it says here that moreover, it sends the wrong message to employees who know of the substitutions as well as the guests who ultimately are deprived of the items that they thought they are or that they purchase, it is also illegal. Okay, so kung medyo nagkakaroon ng, alam nyo, dinideceive natin si guests, kunyari galing sa ganitong area, kunyari galing sa ibang bansa, kunyari imported, okay, so you can be held liable pagdating sa ganun. So next one, Ayan, so we also have here the, ayan, so, so after the origin, we have the size, okay? So product size is in many cases the most important factor in determining how much a guest is willing to pay for a menu item. Sometimes, yung price naman is justifiable pagdating sa pagkain, like pag nareceive mo yung food, pag sinerve, Okay, okay naman pala yung presyo. Okay, kasi marami naman pala yung serving. But sometimes, hindi kasi nagre-reflect yung price doon sa quality of food. Sobrang mahal, pero hindi masarap. Minsan, okay na yung sobrang mahal, pero masarap yung sinerve na, na dish. Kahit kakaunti. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, we need to include in the menu. Okay, like for example, this is pork sinigang. Nakalagay doon, good for 3 to 4 packs. Tapos nakalagay yung, yung price. So, specifying size on a menu is an area that must be approached with the understanding that the law will expect you to deliver what you promise. Okay? So, do not be a, let's say, do not be an entrepreneur or businessman or let's say a chef na kung ano yung nilagay sa menu is hindi mo deliver. So, sabi dyan, the law will expect you to deliver what you promise. So, if you promise, if you stated doon sa menu na ganito, na ganyan, so, you have to see to it na yun yung serve mo. Kasi, a lot of guests will be dismayed, madidismaya, alam yun, a lot of guests will not be satisfied kapag paulit-ulit na na ganun. That is why may mga repeat or may mga loyal guests tayo. Kasi nasisiyahan sila. Diba? Nasasatisfy sila sa mga sineserve yung pagkain. Kahit mahal, kahit mura. So, ibig sabihin, andun pa rin yung satisfaction. So, a simple rule of thumb for avoiding difficulties in this area is, if you say it, serve it. Okay? So, if you say that the, that the dishes or the meal that they ordered will take 20 minutes. Okay? Diba sinasabi yun pag repeat yung order? Mamin sir, your food will be served after 20 minutes. 
So you have to make sure that before 20 minutes, exactly 20 minutes, nakaserve yung pagkain. So otherwise, kung malit, Okay, malit dahil let's say peak season, holiday season, marami nag-order. You have to inform the guests. Ma'am, I'm very sorry. Um, it will take another 10 minutes for your food to be served. So para nang sa ganun, aware sila. Maiwasan natin yung mga guests na alam niyo yun, napakakulit, follow up ng follow up, tapos ikaw nakukulitan ka na din. ba? So let them be aware or inform them kung magkakaroon ng mga delays. Now, if the item is not available, so you have to ask, no? I-double check mo sa kitchen kung sold out na ba item na yan, hindi ba available, ano yung pwedeng mga alternatives na pwede natin ibigay kay guests. So, next we have here, we have origin, size, ingredients, what else? So, we have here health benefits. So, syempre tayo, pag nagtayo ng restaurant, ayaw naman natin na ang mga i-offer natin na menu is makakapagpa-high blood sa ating mga customers. So, we have to make sure na, alam niyo yung balance lang. Kaya nga, in a menu, sinusunod natin yung synchronous, ba yung order ng pagkain. We have the appetizer, we have the entree, we have the, um, let's say, mga vegetable dishes, dessert, etc. We have the beverages, Okay? So, may pamimilian yung ating mga guests. So, in response, restaurants generally have begun to provide greater detail about the nutritional value of their menu items. So, may mga restaurants such as, kung di ako nagkakamali, di ko sure kung sa Batangas to or sa Bataan, yung The Farm. So, sa The Farm, I think ang mga in-offer nilang mga dishes, yung mga pinuntahanan ng mga iba't ibang artista, Ang in-offer nilang dishes is mga puro pang vegetarian. Yun. So, ibig sabihin, medyo less yung mga in-offer nilang dish na may mga pork, beef, etc. So, more on pang vegetarian. Ang term nilang ginagamit doon is keto. Keto diet, kundi si ma'am nagkakamali. Okay? So, may mga restaurants na they make sure na meron silang i-offer na meal na may mga health benefits kang makukuha. May mga nutritional value. So, it says here, we have two types of claims. So, ano ba yan? We have the nutrient claims and the health benefit claims. So, ano yung pinagkaiba nung dalawa na yan? So, of course, pag nutrient claims, it contains specific information about a menu items nutrient content. So, pwede natin ilagay doon if it is low fat, high fiber, low sugar, high sugar, etc. Okay? So, dapat nakalagay doon yon sa pinaka-menu natin. Now, for the health benefit claims, so these are the claims that do not describe the content of specific menu items, but instead show a relationship between a type of food or menu item and the particular health condition. So, for example, um, nakalagay doon sa restaurant, so including a note on their menu stating that eating foods low in saturated fat and cholesterol can reduce the risk of heart disease. So pwede na lang lagyan ng heart healthy, mga light, okay? Like for example sa mga beverages, 'di ba nakalagay Coke Light, Coke Zero, Coke Regular, okay? Para sa ganung ma-determine guess. Kasi may mga guess kasi na ayaw nila na too much sugar ang ini-intake nila. So sometimes ang in order nila instead of Coke Regular, in order nila is Coke Light or Coke Zero. So, very important din yun na nakalagay siya sa ating menu na ino offer So, what else? We have here the IIR or the IRR 10611 or the Implementing Rules and Regulations of Republic Act number 10611. So, ano po ba yung sinasabi dito? Okay, sa IIR na to. So, sinasabi dito that the Republic of the Philippines, Department of Agriculture, Department of Health, Joint DADOH Administrative Order Number 2015-0007, February 20, 2015. So, they have this Republic Act Number 10611. So, itong Republic Act na to, it has something to do with an act to strengthen the food safety regulation system in the country to protect consumer health and facilitate market access 
of local foods and other food products and for other purposes, otherwise known as the Food Safety Act of 2013. So, the Republic Act 10611, ang other term for it is the Food Safety Act of 2013. So, napakasimple lang naman ang explanation about that. So, any food preparation, di ba? Kung ano man yung mga gagawin natin, it, whether it has something to do with beverage, with food. Okay, ibig sabihin, we prepare it in a safe, sanitized, and clean manner. So, we have here the food establishments on the Code on Sanitation of the Philippines o yung tinatawag natin na Presidential Decree 856. Okay? So, ito naman is para sa mga caterers or sa mga catering establishments. Okay? So, operation of caterers and catering establishments including centralized kitchens or bulk food preparation establishments of fast food and restaurant. So, ngayon, kung magtatayo kayo ng restaurant in the future, magiging caterer kayo, magpo-provide kayo ng catering services, ito yung ilan sa mga dapat na meron kayo. Okay, ito yung mga dapat nating um, i-provide. We have to provide sanitary permit, health certificate, sanitation requirements, mga vehicles to transport the food and other food deliveries. So, as you can see, you can you can see these notes as well in your module. Ayan, pagdating sa food containers, very important na lahat ng pagkain na ilalagay natin, especially kung nasa catering industry ka, you should use mga containers for liquid and semi-liquid. Okay, iba ang container ng mga solid food sa mga liquid food. Okay, yung mga gravies na yan, yung mga sauce, you have to make sure na leak-proof yung paglalagyan. Kasi sometimes yung mga catering na yan, sa ibang lugar pa. Diba? Ita-travel pa natin. Kung baga, dadalin pa sa particular area. So, containers for other food, sandwiches, cakes, and other pastry products shall be completely enclosed and sealed as well. Okay? Bakit kailangan naka-close? Bakit kailangan well-sealed? Kasi nga, to prevent um, to prevent any contamination. So, disposable or single service articles for food Ayan. We also have all containers shall not be composed in whole or in part of any poisonous delet ano to? deleterious substance which may render the content injurious to health. So, syempre yung mga food items, wag natin ihalo dun sa mga items natin na gagamitin for sanitation. Ay, baka mamaya may dala-dala tayong mga spray bottle na may laman na sun rocks, may laman na mga um, dishwashing liquid. So, ihiwalay po natin yun. So, we can also use weighing scale. Ayan. So, weighing scale can be properly calibrated and kept free from dirty dust, blood stains from meat and fish. So, if ever bibili tayo ng mga ingredients sa mall, di ba, kung tayo ay may sariling meat shop, we have to make sure na every time na may mga o-order, lilinisin natin yung ating weighing scale. Especially now na we are still experiencing this kind of pandemic. So, meat or fish shall not be placed directly on a weighing scale. A container or wrapper for such meat or fish shall be used during weighing. So, hindi natin pwedeng pagsamahin ano, na timbangin yung meat at saka yung fish. So, mas maganda kung nakarap siya, nakalagay muna siya sa container before you weigh it. Ngayon, kung gusto mo naman na um, talagang i-weigh sila parehas, you have to provide another weighing scale. So, for transport vehicles, syempre, we have to make sure na meron tayong uh, maayos na vehicle, maayos na transportation vehicle to protect your food as well, to protect yung mga prepare mong food from contamination. So, it should be, ayan, vehicles carrying readily perishable foods shall be provided with refrigeration equipment. So, kaya nga yung mga nagdadala ng mga frozen foods, diba, yung mga nagdi-deliver ng mga ice, 7-Eleven, mga frozen products. So, yung kanilang vehicles is merong refrigerator mismo na naka-install. So, all vehicles shall be kept clean and no substance capable of contaminating the food or food products. So, other food deliveries, ayan. So, sabi dito, 
all other deliveries of food and food products from a food source to the food outlets shall be covered by these rules and regulation. So, and subject to inspection and approval of the local health office having jurisdiction on the area of origin of the food or food products. So, minsan tinitignan muna, no? ini-inspect muna yung mga idinideliver nating pagkain bago makarating doon sa outlet mismo. So, local health offices concerned at the receiving point deliveries may also conduct inspection of containers and vehicles. So, yung inspection na yun, hindi naman sa walang tiwala sa inyo yung local health offices o yung local government. It's just that kailangan natin ma-make sure na yung mga dinadalang ingredients, mga items, materials is safe. Okay? So, kasi ang makikinabang naman dyan or ang ang magiging held na liable kung hindi natin susundin yung mga rules and regulation is yung operator, di ba? Yung business owner. So, all inspection shall be covered by a mission order as discussed under Section 4 of these rules and regulation. So, all in all, it is very important for us na if we are in food and beverage industry, it is very important for us to serve high quality food that is prepared in a safe, clean, and sanitized manner. Because at the end of the day, malaki ang contribution ng food and beverage industry sa growth ng hospitality industry as well. Okay, so if you have any questions, if you have any concerns about this lesson, feel free to message me or comment down below in our YouTube video. So, you can see also this um, content in our module. Okay, so thank you so much for listening and have a nice day.